As a commemoration of Azarisol's 124th death anniversary on December 30, 2020, let us look back at the hero's return to the Philippines after his five years of sojourn in Europe. Nali Metang Hare was an 1887 novel written by Jose Rizal which was first published in Berlin, Germany. This novel caused uproars among the fires who were exposing the oppression and corruption happening in the Philippines during the Spanish colonization. Because of this, Rizal was warned by his older brother Pashano, by his brother-in-law Silvestre Obaldo, by Chengoy and other friends about the dangers of returning home, but he did not heed their warnings. He was determined to go back to the Philippines because of four different reasons. First reason is that he needed to operate in his mother's eyes. Second reason is that he desired to serve his people who had long been oppressed by the Spanish tyrants. Third reason is that he wanted to find out for himself how the Noli Metangere and his other writings were affecting the Filipinos and Spaniards in the Philippines. Fourth reason is that he needed to inquire why Leonor Rivera remained silent. Decision to Return Home when he was on Geneva on June 19, 1887, Rizal wrote a letter to Blumentree to tell him that he appreciated the lawyer's advice about staying in Madrid but he cannot accept it because he had always wanted to go back to the country of his birth. Rizal also wrote a letter to his father Francisco when he was in Rome on June 29, 1887 to inform him that he will be returning to the Philippines. Delightful Trip to Manila July 3, 1887 after leaving Rome by the train for Marsalias, Rizal boarded the streamer Chamna. July 20, 1887, Rizal transferred to another streamer Haifong, which was Manila bound. August 2, 1887, Haifong left Saigon to Manila. August 3, 1887, the moon was full and Rizal slept soundly the whole night. August 5, 1887, Haifong arrived in Manila. Happy Homecoming! On August 8, 1887, three days after his arrival in Manila, Rizal returned to Calamba, Laguna. He wrote to Blue Madrid that he had a pleasant voyage and that he and his family were very happy to see each other. He also told him that he was bombarded by a lot of questions. Though happy with his return, his family was worried for his safety. Pashano, his older brother, stayed by his side on the first day of his arrival and Francisco, his father, won't allow him to leave the house. Bizarre. Now a doctor after finishing his degree on medicine in Madrid, established a medical clinic in Calamba. Chidora, his mother, was his first patient. He treated her eyes but was not able to perform any surgical operations because her cataracts were not yet right. Because of Rizal's great practice, his clinic was visited by a lot of people from inside and outside his province. Jose Rizal, who was also called as Dr. Aleman, from being a doctor from Germany, was able to earn a total of 5,000 pesos as medical fees by February 1888. Aside from treating his patients, Rizal also spent his time teaching young folks European sports in the gymnasium which he opened. He believed that through this, the youth would less likely to be involved in cockfighting and gambling. Though one of the reasons why Rizal came back was to inquire why Leonor Rivera remained silent, 
He was not able to talk to his lover because his family did not allow him to go to the pond where the woman was, knowing that Leonor's mother did not like him as son-in-law. Storm of the Nolly It had only been a few weeks since Rizal's arrival and his enemies already plotted his doom. He received a letter from Governor General Emilio Terrero requesting him to come to the Malacanang Palace. Someone told the governor that his novel No Limitang Here had a subversive ideas but Rizal denied it, explaining that he merely exposed the truth. Rizal gave a copy of his novel to the curious Governor General Terrero who read the Noli and found nothing wrong with it. Rizal's enemies were not discouraged with the governor's opinion regarding the Noli Mitangere. They examined the novel twice. The first examination was done by a committee of the faculty of the University of Santo Tomas. This was initiated by messenger Pedro Payo, who sent a copy of the novel to Father Recto Gregorio Echevarria, who worked in the university and the second examination was done by Father Salvador Font. His report was submitted to the Governor General on December 29, 1887. The results of the two examinations were both against the novel. The Nolimitangire was warned by the government, but the news about it spread among masses and it only became more popular. All of the copies of the novel were sold out and both of its friends and enemies found it extremely difficult to secure a copy. In a letter sent to Fernando Cannon from Geneva on June 13, 1887, Rizal said that the price he set per copy was 5 pesetas, but the price later rose to 50 pesos per copy. Attackers of the Noli Eager to discredit Noli Mitangere and other anti-Spanish writings, Father Jose Rodriguez, prior of Guadalupe, published a series of eight pamphlets under the general heading Questiones de Sumo Interes. These pamphlets were entitled as Por que no Jos Hidler Guardaos de Elios Porque. Ique medesi usted de la peste, porque trio fan fos impios, cri usted que diversa no hay purgatorio, hay o no hay inferno, que le parcosted de esos belos, confession o condenación. The news about Noli Mitangere reached Spain and it was firstly attacked on the session hall of the Senate of the Spanish Cortes by various senators, particularly General José de Salamanca, General Luis M. de Pando, Señor Fernando Vida. On January 1890, Vicente Barrientes, the Spanish Academian of Madrid, also bitterly criticized Noli in an article published in a Spanish newspaper, La España Moderna. Defenders of the Noli Though Noli had many attackers, it also had its gallant defenders. Among them were Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Dr. Antonio Maria Regidor, Graciano Lopez Jaina, Mariano Ponce, Father Sanchez, Don Sigismondo Morey, Dr. Miguel Moraita, and Professor Blumentritt. Reverend Vicente Garcia, writing under the pen name Justo Desiderio Magalang, also wrote a defense of the Nolly, which was published in Singapore as an appendix to a pamphlet dated July 18, 1888. According to him, Rizal cannot be an ignorant man, as Father Rodriguez alleged. 
because he was a graduate of the Spanish universities and was a recipient of his scholastic honors. Rizal does not attack the church and Spain as Father Rodriguez claimed, because what Rizal attacked in the Nali were the bad Spanish officials and not Spain, and the bad and corrupt friars and not the church. Father Rodriguez said that those who read Danoli commit a mortal sin, since he had read the novel, therefore he also commits a mortal sin. Rizal himself defended his novel Noli Mitangere against Parianta's attack. In a letter written in Brussels, Belgium in February 1880, Rizal exposed Barrientos' ignorance of Philippine affairs and mental dishonesty, which is unworthy of an academician. Rizal and Tofiel de Andrade Knowing that Rizal's life was in jeopardy because of the powerful friars, Governor General Terrero assigned a young Spanish lieutenant, Don Jose Taviel de Andrade, to be Jose Rizal's bodyguard. Aside from being his protector, Lieutenant Andrade also became an admirer and a good friend of Rizal. They had happy days in Calamba, but these were married by the death of Rizal's older sister Olympia and by the crown's tales that Rizal was a German spy, an agent of Bismarck, a Protestant, a Mason, a witch, a soul beyond salvation, and etc., which were circulated by his enemy. Columbus Agrarian Trouble Having been influenced by certain facts in Noli Metanghere related to land taxes and tenant relations, Governor General Terrero ordered a government investigation of the Friar Estates. On December 30, 1887, the civil governor of Laguna Province directed the municipal authorities of Calamba to investigate the agrarian conditions of their locality and one of those affected was the Calamba Hacienda. To help his folks expose the awful conditions of Calamba, Rizal wrote down his findings which were as follows. 1. The Hacienda of the Dominican Order comprised not only the lands around Calamba, but also the town of Calamba. 2. The profits of the Dominican Order continually increased because of the arbitrary increase of the rentals paid by the tenants. 3. The Hacienda owner never contributed a single centavo for the celebration of the town fiesta, for the education of the children, and for the improvement of agriculture. 4. Tenants who had spent much labor in clearing the lands were dispossessed of said lands for flimsy reason. In 5. High rates of interest were charged to the tenants for delayed payments of rentals, and when the rentals could not be paid, the Hacienda management confiscated their carabao tools and homes. These findings were signed by the tenants and three of the officials of the Hacienda on January 8, 1888. Farewell to Calamba. What Rizal exposed made his enemies more infuriated. Knowing that it was no longer safe for Rizal to stay in the Philippines, Governor General Terrero advised him to leave the country. Rizal knew that he could not disobey the governor's order and so he decided to go, but he was only leaving because he was aware that his presence in Calamba was jeopardizing the safety and happiness of his family and friends, and he could not fight better his enemies and serve his country's cause with greater efficacy by writing in foreign countries. A Poem for Lipa Before Rizal left Calamba, he wrote the poem Himno al Trabajo for his friend in Lipa. This was written in commemoration of the town's elevation to Avilia by a virtue of the Becerra Law of 1868. On February 3, 1888, 
Riza left its country for his own good and for the safety of his family and friends. His first homecoming had ended, but his fight for justice and Philippine freedom had just started. <laughs>